Hi everyone, I'm Jeff Teague. I'm out of Raleigh, North Carolina, and this is Auto Jeff Reviews. To me, Auto Jeff Reviews is celebrating those fascinating, unbelievable, one-of-a-kind vehicles that you might see on the road and off the road, and we're also celebrating the people who own them, who drive them every day. So today we're on the way, we're on the hunt to meet twins. David owns twins, and I met him about two weeks ago fascinating story and of course any parent who owns twins knows it's double the love double the excitement and double the chaos you can see the quicksand forerunner right there baby we're gonna head to one of my favorite locations in the raleigh area i think you guys will like it too and what we'll do is we're gonna hear from david a little bit and find out what makes these vehicles so special, why he wanted them, what he's gonna do with them, and then I'll tell you a little bit about each vehicle so we can know as much as possible and truly appreciate these beasts. Yeah, that's right. Three windshield wipers. It caters more to the flat windshield. Look at the visibility in the front. And this, this is why you need three wipers. My name is David O'Brien. I work for Pepsi in Raleigh. We're at the PNC Arena uh, with both of my uh, babies, my two uh, quicksand uh, Toyota trucks, and uh, here to talk about those today. So David, I just checked the FJ Cruiser 2014 has 11,128 on it. That's remarkable. What does the Forerunner have on it? Uh, 14,750, roughly. Wow. That is crazy. So do you, the kids ever argue about like, take me, take me? <laughs> My kids are grown, so I, I, can, I have them all to myself, luckily. But, <laughs> That's uh, great. Yep. I could just see the forerunner saying, you took the FJ last time. Why are you taking him again? <laughs> I, try to, I try to drive them both on the weekends, so they get equal, equal driving. The first vehicle was the forerunner in 2016. I'd had a forerunner in, uh, in 2006 and I wanted something four-wheel drive uh, to accommodate you know, all sorts of weather situations. I thought I was gonna buy a Limited. That was the first one I looked at. That's what I had in 2006. I uh, went on the website when I got home and I saw the TRD Pro model. There were none on the lot, which is very typical as we all know. I was really attracted to the white one. And my son happened to drop by and I was showing him the, the pictures of it and he said, Man, he said, that, that quicksand color, he said, that is bad. And I, the more I looked at it, I said, you're right. So I called the salesman up and he said, yeah, he said, I've shown my wife that color and she thinks that it's the best looking thing going. So I said, you know what, sight unseen, order it. Now these tires right here, these are 265 70 R17 Ridge Grappler, Niddle Ridge Grappler. It's got that, we know this now, the matte black, with red logo. So it's sort of similar to what the FJ Cruiser, just different color, but it's still got the red. All right, TRD Pro, we've got some black badging. These are Predator Pro step bars, easy to step up into. And then this baby right here, oh, I just love talking about it. This is also a 4.0 liter V6 engine. It produces 270 horsepower, 265 foot-pounds of torque, and it has a 5,000 pound towing capacity, right? Oh, it's beautiful. Now this one here, it's a little bit older. So imagine you had a baby and then you have a 23 year old all of a sudden and then you have another baby, whoops. Well, this is like the big, big, big older brother of FJ Cruiser because it was first established or created or manufactured or produced in 1984. So it's been around almost four decades. This is what I call the last true sheriff in the West, right? The last blade of grass in the prairie the last true SUV because it's a body on frame design and you just don't see those anymore because the body and the frame are bolted securely together and it handles those remote trails that you go on, those mountain passes, the river streams. You can take it places that you can't normally take vehicles like this. Ah, <sighs> Forerunner, I hope it never goes away. When the next gen, sixth generation comes around, I hope it retains the foundation and what it stood for same thing with FJ Cruiser. If it comes back, I want it to look like an FJ Cruiser, act like it. It can talk like a different duck. We want to see some more technology, some more upgrades and things like that. Same thing with this one, but it's got to remain true to who it is. 
as the bachelor says, it's got to be here for the right reasons. You're going to see a constant theme here of black and red when you go inside. We've got these protected seats, very comfortable. And if you look for a 2016, this is in really good condition with the red stitching here. It looks like it was hand stitched, hand sewn. Look at all the visibility in this vehicle. So much leg room, so much headroom. Matter of fact, let's step in inside because I want to show you the visibility here. And then we'll take a look. Of course, Forerunner was refreshed for 2020 model year with an all new multimedia system, a little bit more technology. That's one of the things about FJ is it still has its, we don't want to say older, do we? But a little bit older interior. People would like new technology and things like that. But this right here, this is a classic and it looks great. The other thing I noticed that David did was upgrade the interior lights too. This is the LED interior light upgrade. Of course, they're brighter, they look cool, they look modern, they're not yellowish, and they last a long time, low cost of ownership. Now granted, those are just bulbs, but why would you wanna buy something and not have it last as long as possible? I love these nice, chunky, beefy controls. Hey, look, TRD, baby. Take a look at that. And then this one has off-roading tools like crawl control and multi-terrain select and locking rear differential to get you through obstacles. It gets you out of jams so that you can continue on your mission, finish the adventure. Now the back end of this one here, it's got, I love this black emblem overlay, it's really cool. The back window goes down. People like that about that because your dog can get some air, your kids can get some air, anybody in the back they feel part of the journey, part of the adventure. It has a 5,000 pound towing capacity, and this opens up vertically, backup camera, of course. I say, of course, not all of them do, but starting with 2014, 2014 and a half, a lot of them did. This one has the sliding rear cargo deck. What's nice about this one is it holds 440 pounds. So as I'm watching the football stadium over there, I can be tailgating, baby. Yeah, yeah, this is awesome. You can fit. I don't know, two or three of me right here. No problem at all. You can watch your kids game. You can look at the stars while you lay back and stuff like that. So Forerunner has a ton of room and that's part of its charm, part of the versatility and the function of what you can do with it here. It also has a 400 watt plug as well as a 12 volt circular port. So boy, a lot of people, they can do overnight camping because there's room. Before I bought the Forerunner, I had actually looked at the FJ Cruiser, it was just out. I had ordered one, it came in, and when I saw the Forerunner, I decided to go with it and didn't buy the FJ Cruiser. So I've always been a fan. This is probably four months ago, it's when I bought this car. I think it was in February, and I pulled up Auto Trader, and in Raleigh, North Carolina, this was sitting on a used car lot with 10,800 miles on it. And it was the same color as the Forerunner. And I said, man, I said, that is the coolest thing. I've got to have it. Let's give a little fun facts about our friend FJ Cruiser here. Of course, this is the off-roading utilitarian type vehicle. And it really surprised a lot of people when it was first shown as a concept at the Detroit Auto Show, at the Chicago Auto Show. It first became available in 2007. This color was available, I believe, in 2011 and carried forth through its final production year, 2014. So it had kind of a short lifespan, probably because of sagging sales, probably because of several other factors. We were in the middle of a recession type thing. But boy, oh boy, do we miss this car right here. So from 2007 to 2014, we loved it. This is so different, it's so rugged with the retro interior, the retro exterior. It has a 4.0 liter V6 engine, and you'd expect 260 horsepower and 271 foot-pounds of torque. It has about, I think it's 4,700 to 5,000 towing capacity, and it's a 9.6 inch ground clearance, which you'll see on the four-wheel drive forerunner. The cool thing about this one here is it's made to go places you don't normally go. This is made for the sand. Like you see a sandbox, Sahara Desert, Mojave Desert. Yeah, 
it's kicking up some grains, right? And then the other thing, let's say you want to take it through a riverbed, 27.5 inches of water, you can safely take this in. That is incredible, it's remarkable. And the back part of it, one of the trademark signatures that you'll see is what the RAV4 used to have, spare tire on the back, right? It's ready to roll. Hopefully you won't pop a tire, but it's ready. And then right here, we've got a wiper that elongated. The wipers on the FJ go swish, 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 right? I love this big, thick, beefy chrome exhaust tip. Opens up right here. You've also got the key. And then this is kind of a nice way to open it because it opens from, make sure you don't, from the side here. And then one of the beauties of this car, it's a quirky feature, but you could actually hose this thing down. It's made for that. So if you take it mud in and you just want to hose it down, you can do that. I mean, of course, safely, but yeah, you can do that. And you'll see when we look at the inside, it's fully capable. Love this JBL speaker in the back too. It's kicking sound. It also has a 400 watt plug in here so that you can put your blenders when you're going to the Jimmy Buffett concert. All right, here. Watch this, this is really cool. We can open up a door, it's any door, but this has, some people would call it a suicide door. Toyota calls it a clamshell design, because think about it, gonna blow your mind. It opens up like a clamshell design. The thing that's remarkable about this one is, come on in here, I wanna show you, just look how immaculate. You could eat off this thing. Huh? Huh? This is one of my favorite cars to show, similar to like an access cab Tacoma because you can see inside the whole darn thing all at once. Look at these seats. You would not expect a 2014, we're getting into 2022 model year, so we're almost at an eight year old vehicle, right? Look at this. And then the other thing we have, we've got seat covers here, gotta protect. There's so much, it's a tall vehicle, headroom, legroom, shoulder room. You would wanna adjust the seats in the front to give ample room to people in the back, especially if they're above six foot. Helicopter. Hey, David. <laughs> we see you. And see, the cool thing about it is it gives you all the information you need, but it's done with a retro feel. You feel like you're back in Woolworths at the five cent store, right? Not really, but remember, this is a vehicle that came from the concept of a military vehicle. Both Japan and the United States wanted this. Here's our, see, I like this. This is so unique, so different. It's got the quicksand themed, Accents on the door panel, so cool. Nice big chunky levers. See, this is a fun car. If you want a four wheel drive fun car and you could find one and you can afford one, this might be the trick right here. And then look at this. If you're going off road and you need to see approach angle, departure angles and things like that, check your orientation so you don't get lost in the woods. It's got everything folks. It's got it all. You want to see something else really quirky? Look at this. It's got a visor that flips down on the side. I'm gonna block out the sun. And a lot of people probably want to know this. This is gonna be a different type of TRD than we're used to seeing on say like 4Runner. Uh, LT 265 75 R16 all terrain tires. Of course, this is going to change when we get a lift. Can I get a lift? Yeah, you're about to. I'm always looking for new, new things to uh, customize. One of my latest uh, purchases were the LED uh, fogs and, and headlights made by Morimoto. Watch this, I'll uh, turn these, turn my flashers on for you. So yeah, this is what the turn signals look like when I uh, make a turn. Do you get some stares? <laughs> Absolutely, especially from uh, other Forerunner owners because it's not not standard, right? It's it's something uh, something different. So oh, yeah, I get a lot of stares, a lot of thumbs up, those kind of things. Yeah, that's usually the Toyota sign. If you have a Toyota truck yeah. or SUV, it's, 
you're going to get at least a thumbs up. Yep, absolutely. Quite a bit, actually. Putting LEDs on the front, I also did the uh, tail lights. That's so freaking and, cool, man. And as you can see, the uh, turn signals uh, flash like the front side. So uh, again, I get people from the back. I can see them point. When I'm looking in my rearview mirror, I see people pointing at the, at the lights when I'm making the turn. So it's, it's, uh, so it's awesome. pretty cool. The other thing I've done is, is had this black uh, overlay put on over the standard uh, standard look here. Yeah, and you know what I like about this is quicksand is such a tough color, but when it's mixed with the black accents on here, it is one of the toughest looking vehicles I've seen in a long time. Yeah, another thing I had to change, I didn't, the roof rack was uh, a, a metal color, and so I had it powder coated again in black to 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 tie it all in with you know the black and the quicksand so they're yeah, they're really yeah there's there's no no chrome no no uh, metal look on the on the car anymore when i bought the vehicle it it had a brush guard on it a black brush guard right. and it had the traditional uh, fj cruiser look with you know the uh silver parts of the bumper these lights were also silver as well as the door handles so uh, at Fred Anderson, I had I ordered uh, all the black parts uh, to continue the, the same theme as the Forerunner and replaced all of that silver look with black components here. Hey, David, I wanted to talk about there's a such thing as I guess we'll call it a traditional FJ Cruiser. And then the trail team, normally you're going to see a vehicle like this with a white top. This is unique, right? It is very unique. And uh, uh, the first owner obviously didn't like the white top, so he had it painted to match the, the lower part of the car, which again is the trail team's theme. So again, as I explained my parts that I had replaced in black, that also is trail team. So for all intensive purposes, you would think this was a trail team's edition, other it doesn't have the badging though, but the look is 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 gonna be the same. You're like the even though you didn't paint it yourself, you're like the Dr. Frankenstein of <laughs> FJ Cruisers. <laughs> now you were saying Forerunner has of course the TRD wheels and things like that. You've got big plans for this sucker, don't you? I do. Uh, this this particular vehicle came with TRD wheels and and the tires, I believe they're the original ones. Uh, with the low mileage, but my plans are, uh, I've got a couple things on order. Uh, I'm getting ready to install a three inch uh, Old Man Emu lift. Excellent. Uh, I am, I bought some special black wheels. They are not TRD, uh, I think it's KMC that I bought. And also I'm putting a, a 285 17 inch tire so it's going to be lifted and with bigger, bigger tires on it. It's going to be bigger than the Forerunner. Uh, it should be. You're right. But it, again, it it follows that same all black quicksand look. David, this is like the elephant in the room. We've got two incredible beasts here, right? Which one's your favorite? Come on, spill it. Well, you know, you know, Jeff, that you're not supposed to ask a father which one of his kids he likes best. You're under interrogation pretty hot in here, isn't it? But you'd like a drink, wouldn't you? Which one's your favorite? <laughs> Say it. I'm starting to sweat, Jeff. <laughs> if I have to pick one, I'll pick the Forerunner, though. That's uh, my original baby, so I love this one a little more, probably, at this point. David, thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate your time, but more importantly, sharing with the whole world your babies. Uh, got anything to say? Final words? Well, you know, I, uh, I do just, just very quickly. I'm, I'm so excited about both of these vehicles and I, I don't drive them much, so they stay in the garage. And so to be able to share them, uh, let other people see kind of the unusual pair that I have, uh, it, it's cool. Everyone, please leave a comment, give David some love, give a shout out to the vehicles and tell us which one of these bad boys do you like the best? This ought to be good.
If you like the video and you like this idea of talking about human stories and cool cars and trucks and SUVs, and then also I'll be doing reviews of other manufacturers, classic cars, exotic cars, sports cars, please hit subscribe. I want you to join my car loving community here at Auto Jeff Reviews. Thanks so much, and I'll see you next time. Bye.